So in our last section, we started evaluating triple integrals in Cartesian or rectangular coordinate systems. In this section, I'd like to talk about triple integrals over cylindrical and spherical objects. If necessary, I would recommend reviewing the section over cylindrical and spherical coordinates to get a better idea of what's going to be happening in here. Now, as a reminder, for cylindrical coordinates, Cylindrical coordinates are what you get when you convert x and y into polar coordinates while making no change to z. So x would be r times the cosine of theta, y would be r times the sine of theta, and z is left as simply z. As a result of this, we also get that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and that the tangent of theta is equal to y over x. <clears throat> now, in the event that the object that you get in cylindrical coordinates is still round or circular with respect to the RZ trace. RZ trace is what we get by saying, <clears throat> let's convert X and Y to R. If what you have at that point is still circular in nature, what you might do is consider taking R and Z and converting into spherical coordinates. So in spherical coordinates, this is where we defined two new quantities, one being rho and the other being phi. As a result, we would get that x is equal to, uh, it's r times the cosine of theta, y was equal to r times the sine of theta, and z was equal to z. The two additional um, conversions that we get here are that z would be equal to rho times the cosine of phi, and r is equal to rho times the sine of phi. Making these substitutions up here, we get the following conversions from Cartesian into spherical. This would be rho times the sine of phi times the cosine of theta. y would be rho times the sine of phi times the sine of theta, and z would be equal to rho times the sine of phi. As a result of all of these things, we also get that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to rho squared, something that was very typical that we saw in terms of spheres. Now let's talk about the situations where you would want to consider a conversion into either cylindrical or spherical coordinates. I would say one big one would be when you are dealing with cylinders, specifically right circular cylinders. Uh, when you're dealing with um, quadric surfaces, the one that tends to come up most frequently are the paraboloids. Cones tend to show up pretty frequently as well, as well as spheres. Now you'll notice that in all of these cases, they have a circular cross-section, which is why you would want to convert it into, at the very least, cylindrical coordinates. Now, as far as using cylindrical versus spherical coordinates, both can be used in any of these situations. The higher it is up here, the more I would recommend that you use cylindrical coordinates. Cylind cylindrical. Yeah, I think I got that right. The farther down it is, the more I would recommend spherical coordinates. Now, one big thing that we learned from the, uh, the unit on polar coordinates, uh, specifically double integrals in polar coordinates, it's that any time you transfer a set of variables into a polar system, there's going to be an additional multiplier of whatever the distance is. In the last section, we refer to that as the Jacobian of the transformation. So for cylindrical coordinates, we defined dv to be dx times dy times dz in some order. x and y are the ones being converted into polar coordinates, and so we'll see the exact same thing done with this as what we saw in the polar coordinate section. This was r dr d theta. So most frequently this is going to be written as r dz dr d theta. 
So the Jacobian of the cylindrical coordinate transformation would simply be r. Now, if I were to take this and convert to spherical, we can still start with the fact that we want dv. Oh boy, killed pen. That's exciting. We can still start with the fact that we just said that dv is going to be equal to r times dz dr d theta. When we convert from cylindrical to spherical, it's dz and dr that are being converted into polar. The extra multiplier should be a distance times whatever those two are. The distance in spherical coordinates would be rho. So this will be rho d rho d phi. However, it'll also be necessary that we convert r to the spherical coordinate system, and we just said a moment ago that that is equal to r times the sine of phi. Put it together, you'll have two factors of rho, one factor of the sine of phi, followed by your differentials. So this will be rho squared times the sine of phi times, typical order that you'll see here will be d phi, d, excuse me, d rho, d phi, d theta just to make sure that d theta is still coming last and any distances come first, angles go last.